All right, this is going to be the next uh, project here. There, something else in the junk box I picked up a while back. Um, where observation car, these are really early cars. Um, do have their lights. See observation. Pullman. Baggage car. And a 318 engine. I'm going to, first off, this, uh, <laughs> this is non-running. The wheels are good. I don't know if you can see, but the wiring is completely fried. So if the motor's no good, I'm going to hold off on going any farther. So that's going to be today's project is seeing if I can get this motor running and go from there. All right, so to open up the engine, there are screws at each end and you got to take off the reversing unit screw. Well, the wiring is so stiff, <laughs> it's not even letting me get to the lights. Okay, I know that's bad. All right, I'm just cutting these. Oh, I don't know how this is gonna, how that's gonna go. I mean, wow, that is one big mess here. Now the next thing is to release the motor. So you got four screws to take out. And there's a screw here to release the reversing switch.
All right, so still got quite a mess. So see how I'm probably going to have to pull the wheels to get up to all these wires. Let me assess this and get back to the next step. All right, so I pulled the wheels and there is absolutely no conductivity. So this thing is so gummed up that um, when I pulled the brush plate, everything was frozen. What I think has happened, and I'm a little more hopeful, but I think uh, you know you got 80 plus years of people spraying oil on this stuff and it's basically just liquefied and the insulation on the wires broke down and kind of all just melted into one big mass of nothing so um, I'm going to start rewiring it and, and see what happens um, the brushes <laughs> here's what was left of one of the brushes and they were that same white insulation had melted and was in there and so they weren't even moving. Here's the other brush. So you can tell right off the bat there, this thing has not been, had any maintenance done on it for a long, long time. And that's why it was put away. <laughs> so, all right, I'll start uh, rewiring this and pick up from there. Well, I had success in the rewiring. But within 30 seconds of the motor running, the armature exploded. So that motor is dead. And that one's not coming back. So I'll keep my eye out. It's become a parts motor. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I went back into my parts box and lo and behold I was very lucky I uh, I had this engine which was complete in there and uh, it was another restor program but the motor in that one was excellent so switch that out I'm going to use that motor for the 318 and here So now I'm going to start seeing, tear this down, got to do the sandblasting, I've got to order the powders. So this was just the uh, thing mechanically to see if I can get going, and yes, I'm good. Um, sidebars, hardest stuff to find these days are these manual switches. So that engine did not even have a manual switch, so this engine still did it. So I was still able to keep it the way it's supposed to be. And uh, here we go. All right, so I'm picking up where I left off. Um, it was a busy week, so I got nothing done. So here we are in the weekend, and we're going to see how far I can get with starting the powder coating on these pieces. Uh, one thing I did get done during the week was I restored the trucks, so I polished all the wheels, rollers. So they're, they're all ready to go back once the cars are finished. So took all the uh, plastic shade material off. I have going to reproduce that. And uh, so we'll see how far we get. Of course, it looks like it's going to rain here. So I don't know how far I'm going to get today, but we'll go along as long as I can. All right, so I ran into unexpected problems that are really frustrating. Um, here were the unfinished ones, so I still have one to powder coat. But here's one that I powder coated, and it's finished. These particular cars, 
because they're oversized, I'll show you what I mean, have additions here and here. And what you can see is <laughs> when you powder coat, you need 400 degrees. And guess what happens at 400 degrees? Because these don't have tabs. These cars are actually all soldered together. So the solder joints started to separate. So it happened on the cars and it happened on the tops. So I don't have the soldering capability, plus the heat would uh, affect the powder coating. So I epoxied everything back together again, and it's good. But now I have to make them fit again, so I gotta trim this stuff because the epoxy stops the end pieces from fitting in there like they should. So a little more work and it slowed me down a little bit, but uh, that's what I'm dealing with now. All right, so I made my adjustments on my cars. I got two back together. Ended up doing the epoxy along the seams. And then the uh, engine body is also partially put back together. I'm gonna, I'm getting ready to powder coat the final pieces. I'll do that and then uh, pick up with the uh, adding all the uh, brass and so on. Yeah, here they are just out of the oven. I don't see any obvious imperfections. So we just wait for them to cool now and start the reassembly. Here's the conclusion. So they're all back together again. Spent all day putting the passenger cars back together. Did the engine yesterday. I mean, Lionel, I, don't, I couldn't imagine being the person putting these things together originally in the factory. There's a lot of work involved in taking these apart and putting them back together again. So it's a 318 engine. This engine, is it is the early version. It was, this is a 1924 engine. The passenger cars are, they span a couple of years, but because of the uh, combine baggage car here, that was made in 1921. The other two cars started being made in 1918. So here's the finished set. Also, this engine never came with these cars. This was without a doubt the uh, most daunting restoration I've done to date. These cars were a total disaster. Um, of course, now at this point, I gotta go back and look at my own pictures because I don't know uh, what they were looking at, but I bought this whole set probably for, with the engine, probably for less than a hundred dollars because it was junk, without a doubt. <clears throat> so, one of the things that I learned to do with this set though, because if you've been doing your own restorations, you know, the biggest issue is the uh, decaling and I could not find any place that had New York Central decals so I, I made the investment and uh, bought a inkjet printer and used the decal paper and I'll show that in another video how it works but you can pretty much now uh, make your own decals and do any kind of restoration work you want to do. Um, and it's a fraction of the cost because I, I, I was spending $20 a set for these uh, decals from eBay. 
So now I can print a whole page and have a lifetime supply just for the, you know, it's 20 pages for like $9. So doing that math, uh, I can do a lot more stuff. All right, so the final stage is I'll put it on the track and send it all around. are completed very happy not bad anything can be restored to make it printable again I didn't know if these would come but you saw the you saw the depths of what it took to get them running again but it was fun it's why we call it the hobby have a good night <laughs>